Hi, I'm Obi Naha, Chief Commercial Officer at Cambridge Wireless. Cambridge Wireless, we're a not-for-profit technology membership organisation, been around 18 years, and we have within our community over about 1,000 companies in about 18 countries. So what we do as an organisation is we bring our members together, we help them to network, collaborate and innovate through thought leadership events. We also run innovation accelerator programmes as well. What's core is when we bring them together, it's around digital and connectivity. So we've got far ranging companies from water companies, automotive companies, to chips set providers and telco companies. So that's what we do is we collaborate and showcase innovation and help them to scale that innovation. And here we have an example of where we've actually built a 5G testbed and private network. And we're running some other innovation accelerators as well. Today what we've been demonstrating is uh, the outcomes of a 12-week accelerator program for the Cambridge Wireless 5G testbed here in Cambridge. Yeah, the outcomes have been is there's been three SME companies uh, that we've actually worked uh, with in partnership with Huawei and the applications that we've been demonstrating have been ranging from eSports using AR and VR and also autonomous vehicles with a robotic arm and then also radar technology for detecting cars and I think the key focus has been how 5G has actually enhanced the user case as well as the business value for those specific applications. It's been important for us because what we want to do is we're at the heart of the ecosystem here in terms of technology enabling communications, digital technology in the ecosystem. So what we're keen to do is to help SMEs show the value of 5G and how that can be scaled and contributed towards the economy. So in actually building this 5G testbed, working with the SMEs, it's actually showing that level of validation, but also key is to actually show the kind of innovation that can come up in terms of collaboration. We're in the heart of Cambridge, so we've got a really rich cluster of vertical challenges and applications uh, from vertical uh, challenge owners. So I think that's one aspect of what's unique. Two is because it's a private 5G network that we've actually developed and created here in partnership with Huawei, we have the flexibility to actually personalise the 5G offering for these SMEs here in Cambridge. And we do it faster, uh, we're quite adaptive in terms of how we customise the solution and the ability to scale this beyond just a proof of concept but turn it into proof of value. There's lots of innovation around here as well that we can really tap into. I wouldn't say it's really that competitive. All I would say is that for us, we have a filtering process that if we can find the right SMEs that we think can add value in terms of what we're doing here, then we'll actually select those companies and then help them to go along that journey in terms of 5G and innovation. But also what's key is their ability to scale, not only here in the UK, but in international waters as well. So what's next is that at the moment around us what we have is 5G connectivity in the building. So over the next few months we're looking to extend the reach of the 5G to an outdoor area. Also what we're looking to do is to introduce NBIOT uh, as well uh, within this 5G testbed. And then moving forward in February next year, we're inviting the next cohort of SMEs to join us for the next acceleration program. So there's some interesting uh, challenges around maybe around healthcare, uh, retail, uh, industrial applications. So we're going to do like a international reach out. Uh, what we've got here, some great case studies that we can show, proven case studies of companies we've worked with. So we can actually show that uh, through videos, through social media of what we've done. And then we try to replicate that into some hot subject areas at the moment. So I'm excited in some of the applications are combining AI, computer vision from robotics. There's some really interesting telehealth applications as well. So I think there's some interesting applications. There's still a challenge though in terms of business models around 5G and sometimes there's this challenge of technology companies just pushing technology for the, for the sake of technology. So what we're trying to do here is to show the business efficiency uh, of 5G. Uh, so that's what we're actually doing here, is just showing those user cases and how 5G can be better than some of the other applications and other uh, digital connectivity and comms. And so what about 5G when you look into rural locations as well? I think all we can do here is demonstrate the value and the reach of 5G for interesting applications from healthcare, autonomous vehicles, uh, gaming. And then we have to be slightly reliant on engaging with the mobile network operators to make sure there is 5G reach in other places. I think where we have confidence though and what we've proven here is the ability to create a 5G private network 
I think that's really interesting because there are some industry sectors there who are interested in having a, a, a private 5G network that they can own and they can adapt and use. And that's what we've done. And actually we did this in record time uh, with our partners here as well. So I think actually having that 5G private network gives you a lot of power. And, and I'm quite confident about where that's gonna go in the future. Uh, robotics, industrial applications of 5G where you need low latency, high bandwidth applications from pick and place, computer vision. So those kinds of or remote applications. So that's where I think uh, 5G can go uh, moving forward. So that's where really I'm looking uh, quite excitingly at those kind of applications. So we do autonomous machines uh, as a service. So basically robots that do dangerous or dirty or repetitive uh, tasks in different uh, um, verticals, markets uh, and operating environments. So there, we wanted to test the limits uh, of some of the solutions and applications that we can take to market. Um, and we wanted to test uh, especially very demanding and uh, high bandwidth uh, applications uh, like video and real-time control of, of robotic arms in very dangerous environments. Working here with um, Cambridge Wireless has been the access to um, kind of industry partners, um, even mentors uh, from Ke uh, Cambridge Wireless uh, themselves, but from Huawei also, from other uh, previous participants and other, other partners. And that um, allowed us to think about different use cases uh, of access to uh, to, to, to different markets and to different industries. We have different uh, options of connectivity, but 5G gives us uh, a lot of control in terms of the control channels, so the control messages that we send back and forth between the, the rover uh, and our control center, and very high bandwidth, so we could actually um, uh, take from the rover um, uh, very high quality video. Uh, with, with uh, very high bandwidth and multiple multiple streams at the same time. What we wanted to test in this uh, in this environment uh, was the the kind of the ability of having uh, different payloads on top of the rover, and for that we used the collaboration with Accent Robotics, which is a, a previous participant in the, in this accelerator, and it kind of just just fit perfectly and prove that we can actually have flexible and different modular uh, payloads on top of the rover. We expect to continue to extend our 5G capabilities and um, I can see uh, using the test bed uh, in specific use cases that we uh, explore uh, with um, specific end users in, in, in different industries. So we would probably uh, test in a, a uh, private uh, uh, 5G uh, network uh, first. We'd expect to continue to collaborate technically. There's there's lots of knowledge here about uh, 5G. There are some uh, some applications where we'll need that that kind of knowledge. What we can see um, on, on the screens on, of the demonstration we did today is the the three uh, camera feeds that we have uh, from the rover that allows us. Uh, that allows a teleoperator to actually know uh, where, where the rover is. And you can all, all also see the kind of the, the control uh, software uh, joystick uh, and uh, actual uh, hardware uh, joystick that we use to control and move the uh, rover around. The, the way we set up the rover was with, um, besides the kind of all the sensors and, and the cameras, was with the robotic arm from Extend Robotics, um, and you can also see that in a, in a different uh, control environment uh, specific for, for it. The rover was not very far from the control joystick, but the, the, what's important is where, where was that communication going uh, over, and it was over the 5G network. So what we simulated was uh, three, three different uh, locations where you add the, the rover and the robotic arm uh, themselves and then a different location, different network where the uh, control center for the rover itself was, where you could actually uh, kind of just move the rover back and forth and see where it was. And we simulated a different uh, uh, place over the 5G network uh, where the, the, um, the control center for the, or the virtual environment that is used to control the robotic arm uh, was. And so practically what we showed was that 
uh, we could be across the country moving the rover back and forth while in uh, uh, another part of the country we could have a, a specialized um, um, operator that was uh, a specialist in the in the robot arm or specialist in the domain that you want to, the robot arm to to operate so for example if you if you're in a, a, uh, an industrial disaster scenario where it's very dangerous to to actually have people to to move their energy to move there we could um, uh, have a, a controller in one part of the country move the rover to the right place and then uh, an engineer instead of actually going in, uh, to, to the site could actually control the robot arm uh, in a very intuitive, uh, very intuitive way. So here with Chemish Wireless we're working on this uh, accelerator program and my role has been to mentor some of the, uh, the partners in this, uh, well now the second phase of the program. So what we're doing is it starts right at the very beginning when we are selecting and assessing the partners that we want to uh, be involved with and to uh, assess and support who can get the most benefit from this program. And then once we've brought them on board, I work closely with them and support and guide them end to end throughout the whole process. Not from a specific deep technology point of view, but from the, the business, the value, the approach, the opportunity to collaborate, and different ways of uh, taking advantage of this whole process. In terms of the partners and the technologies that they're using, well, we've seen some very, very different sets of uh, uh, partner activities this time. Uh, compared to the first program, we had people in the first program who were very much involved in sensors and monitors and uh, agricultural solutions, that sort of thing. This time we've got some more, possibly some more interesting program partners with uh, Epitomical is the one I've been working with and mentoring them. Um, they have a, a, a rover, uh, an autonomous vehicle effectively, but a controlled and or autonomous vehicle. And that becomes a platform for other services, other capability, other functionality. And we brought together a partner from the first program with Epitomical in the second program. That's Extend Robotics and Epitomical. Joining those two solutions together and creating something which gives us this, this uh, autonomous rover with a robotic arm that can perform tasks in in you know multitude of different circumstances. I think what we're providing, apart from the base technology with the 5G infrastructure that we have here in the mobile private network that we've got at Cambridge, is the, the, the link to the knowledge, the expertise, the, um, uh, the, the, the know-how that helps these partners within the UK to uh, realise the value and the benefit that the technology brings. So I think our contribution is, is very much around helping these SMEs to, to, to grow, to develop their capability and from our point of view that also helps us to, to um, uh, take some of those ideas with our partners into areas which they might otherwise not be able to reach. We understand the models from a technology point of view, from a business point of view, and from a value creation point of view. And then we look perhaps in the industry sectors that are specific to that solution. And then we extrapolate that, we extend that to see, well, what does that mean across a much wider business environment? Not just here in the UK, in fact, but across all operations globally where Huawei is, uh, uh, is able to engage with operators end-to-end. -end. And that's actually quite useful for us to be able to have a story, to engage, to, to begin a dialogue and have some material and genuine examples of where the, the technology that we have can be used successfully. It's, it's sort of helping to, to establish uh, the relationship, the, the wider ecosystem, because all these players have to work together and it's being able to do that in the context of a business model that, that, is, that is realistic, uh, with technology that is viable. But, but it's, as I say, it's, it's, it's a little bit more than just making the introduction. It's, it's seeing it through, it's guiding, and it's, it's helping to, to establish that, that sort of initial um, dialogue and connectivity from a communication point of view.